All right, let's see what I've got to do today. Well, looks like we got a pile of tanks to service, got a regulator, and a computer to deal with. Definitely going to be a busy day. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now I've got a very, very busy day ahead of me today. I've got several tanks right here as you can see to service. I've got a regulator that I've got to get serviced. I've got to make a video for you guys on the Mario Sirius. So I'm going to try to get that done today. But I've been so slammed here lately with classes. I've been teaching all over the eastern seaboard from north all the way down the south and it's just been crazy right now. We have been doing tons of underwater salvage work right now. We just did two large uh, cruiser style boats yesterday and I've also been going out and doing a ton of search and recovery on top of everything else that we do here at the marina. So it has been very, very hectic for us, but I'm going to show you typically how my days start out if I don't immediately just go jump in the water somewhere and go diving, whether I'm teaching or salvaging or doing something like that. Typically, I'll have a complete work order that I've got to get through, and that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing these cylinders. We're going to be doing these regulators, and I'm going to take you guys along for the ride to show you what a normal day for a dive professional is like at a local dive shop. All right, the first thing, guys, I've got to drain all these cylinders, so I'm going to take them outside, and I'm going to drain them really quick. I did come in about an hour early today, but it's already the first 15 minutes just getting in here. Um, so I've got 45 minutes to try to get all these cylinders done prior to uh, having to actually open up the store today. So let me get these dragged outside really quick and see if they are drained or try to get them drained really quick. All right, thankfully those two are already drained. Let's take these steels out. Get them a draining. Take the rest of these out. In the draining. And we got two more here. All right, we're going to bring these back in. We're going to get this door shut. But you guys can hear me talk. And we are going to start with these two cylinders here. Get my workbench cleaned off. All right. And we're going to try to get all these done within a 45 minute time frame and get them filled up as well uh, so that the customers can come by and get them today. I do have a regulator to service today as well. Unfortunately, I am missing one parts kit that I need. I've got it on order. I hope it comes in today, but if not, uh, customer said he'd be fine towards the end of the week. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, let's jump on it and get these tanks underway. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. See if these valves are loose enough. Nope, that one's not. That one's not. So let's get a little magical tool here called a wrench. Let's get these valves loosened up. Like I said, we've got a ton of stuff to get through this morning. We're going to see if we can get it all done before opening. Okay. These valves off. <clears throat> Do a little test of the valve. Everything seems to be nice and smooth on it. 
Test this other one out. It's nice and smooth. Could use a little cleaning. It's got a little bit of damage on it right there. Alright, let's get her tank covers off. Let's go ahead and start Just scraping them. These old inspection stickers off. You know, I get asked all the time as a technician, why do we use <clears throat> the services that we do and the, the training ENT, such as we are PSI and PCI certified technicians? Why do we choose them over other training organizations? Um, and one of the reasons, primarily, is due to the fact that they are the standard they set the standard they're the only ones that um really abide by all the regulations if you will set forth by cga and the department of transportation and things like that um and their training is constantly changing they don't just set a curriculum and that's it and you learn one and done there, there's renewal processes that you have to go through and so that's why we choose um get this sticker up here off that's why we choose to go with them and the the support that they give us is just truly second to none um, so, all right that's done there i'll have to get my little stool here because we got to get this tank boot off next here on the outside all appears to be good let's get our straight edge over here check for any major deformities in the cylinder don't see any all appears to be good on there yep that's good all right now we're going to start with the inside I apologize for the camera angle guys I'm trying to film for you on two different cameras here I don't know if you guys can really see what I'm doing here, but yep, I just look good. Everything looks good thus far. Nope. Oh. Yeah, I guess I could have put this on a head mount instead of a chest mount. Maybe you guys could have seen more. All right. Just in case you're wondering what I'm doing, I am checking the threads for debris. So I was looking for cracks, but now I'm looking for debris. And sometimes the debris is not a bad thing. It's just you can tell when the threads have really been lubricated and it gets dirty, it turns colors. Everything looks good there. Check for some folds. Everything's good there. All right, now let's check the internal internal. Yeah, let's see if you guys can see that. You'll see down in there. Looks good to me. Looks clean, dry, and shiny. So a little bit of water marks down in there. Yep. I believe that tank is going to be good to go. So let's go ahead and reinstall the valve. There's some ring here. That's good. Get a little lubricant here. That's good. All right. Get that screwed back in. Oh, 
Oh, we're running out of time. My hour turned to 45 minutes, just turned to 30 minutes. And I'm just one tank in and still got to fill all these tanks. All right, let's get that boot back on. That's good. Let's get this valve back in place. Make sure everything's good there. All right, we'll get it torqued down. Let's get a new sticker here. Get several out. Get it positioned. Boom, perfect. All right, let's put our tank cover back on for her. All right, gotta get that one filled. There's one down. Let's try to speed through these, see if we can get the rest of them done. Looky, 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 looky. Let's see if you guys can see this. I don't know if the video is going to do justice. Let me get the mirror and see if you guys can see this. Let's see if I can get the camera just right. There it is. Yes, can y'all see that right there? Try to circle it for you on the camera. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. That appears to be a crack, but I'm going to show you what it really is. I don't know if the camera's getting that. It goes across about three threads there. So let me get a pick and I'll show you exactly what that is. And I think sometimes, I've made a video on this before, sometimes overzealous technicians can condemn a cylinder because of their misunderstanding. So let me get this tank turned for you. And what I'm looking at is right here in these top three threads. I don't know if that camera is getting it just right, but watch this. I'm going to take my little pick. And then we'll pick it out. And if you can see on camera, get it in frame for you. Can you see that? That is a piece of debris. It makes it appear as if there was a crack. And in reality, looks like it's just a. Get the camera going again. Looks like just a piece of hair. That's it. All right, let's finish this one up.
All right, now we got to get this tank boot off of this one. Check the bottom for line corrosion, any type of rust on the bottom. We also got to check for a bell like tone. Just like that. Now you can see that the bottom here is rounded. And we can check for corrosion, anything like that. So if I go to try to stand this cylinder up now, it's not going to stand on its own. So you can see why I leave the boot on it during the inspection process. But now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my mallet, but I'm going to use the back side. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to ring the bell. Sounds like a bell. It's ringing out. If it wasn't ringing out, and it still rings out there, if I put the boot on it, well, it still rings out. But once again, if it was muffled, if it just kind of went dunk, then I would know that the metal's bad. So that's why we do it the way we do it. All right, guys, just like that, I was able to get through all those tanks. I just barely had enough time for somebody to come in, so that was really good for me. Um, I still got a regulator that I need to get serviced. Uh, I am missing one parts kit for it, so I'm waiting on it to come in as soon as it does. Probably take me about an hour to knock that regulator out. That is a cold water reg, so there's a couple little different things I've got to do to it that I wouldn't do to a normal reg. So yeah, but I'm going to take all these tanks downstairs, get them filled up, get them up front for customers to pick up. But I really enjoyed you guys coming on this journey with me. I want you to understand, if you work in this industry, or if you want to work in this industry as a dye professional, you've got to have better talents than just really good teaching skills. If you want to be successful and you want to go far in this industry, you need to be able to do a ton of different things. Spend the money, put forth the effort, make that investment to become a technician in whatever, whoever you work for, whatever store, become a technician for whatever brands they sell, become a PSI, PCI certified technician so that you can service tanks, whether it's the, just the, doing the visuals or even if you're at a facility that does hydros, do all that so that you can earn a better uh, living, if you will, as a professional and you can help your customers out. If you're just a dive instructor and you want to make it, say, independently, as long as you're in an area where you have no competition but you can still offer these services to your customers, that's great. Most professionals that actually do this for a living they don't just do it on the side they actually work for stores and they're going to have better potential and growth and expanding their um their resources if they will by becoming trained technicians and doing things just like you see us do here but guys if you got any questions drop me a comment down below if you're interested in becoming a dive professional or maybe even getting a job in the industry drop me a comment and i may be able to help you out in that area because i really hope you enjoyed the video if you did give me a big thumbs up definitely share it. i'm going to go ahead and sign off for today take care god bless and i'll see you in the next video